situation so many times. Anything you could tell your teammates about handling the enormity and the big stage of the NBA Finals? I think our guys have handled the stage very well. Don't change their approach because it's the Finals. I think um, I've put our guys in position. Um, I gave them the blueprint. I think they're ready for it. You already talked about your hard drive last week. When you've been when you've been downloading the postseason software into it, what what's the the best thing that's come out of that? What's the most valuable thing that you've learned through all your postseasons? Um, I stay even kill. Um, you stay even kill throughout throughout the postseason. No matter if you're up, no matter if you're down. Um, you know, one game can change a hairline. The next game it could be the exact opposite. So you can't get involved and you can't think about it. You can't even. Really put your mind to it. You just got to understand what the task at hand and, and go out and do it. You've been through the subject matter a bunch of times throughout the course of the season, and you compared you and Kyrie to kind of being new students at school. It takes a while to get each other's inside jokes and stuff, but we just spoke to Kyrie about you, and, and he kind of just spoke from the heart about what you've meant to him and, and the team this year. W what does Kyrie mean to you uh, on, on this team? Uh, well, I mean, like I said before, part of the reason. Um, you know, I decided to come back from the beginning was his um, how special he was. I noticed that as well. And um, to see him grow and to see him learn, you know, what it means to truly be a professional every day since I've been here, um, it's been, a, it's been a, a huge reward and it's been great to see it. You know, to see his mind process, you know, so many different things, you know, over the course of these months and to be able to translate that not only to on the floor but off the court as well, uh, it's been a treat to watch. For another one of those steps that you like to talk about? Um, well, absolutely. And um, like I said, Kyrie at 50%, Kyrie at 60% is better than Kyrie at all. And uh, for him to come back and, and, and uh, just give us that boost you know, in front of our home fans, I think it was, uh, it was all the more why we was able to close that series out. LeBron, what did you think of your foray into film with Amy Schumer, Bill Hader, and uh, Jed Apatow? Say that again, my what? Your foray into film? Um, you know, it was a great experience. Um, I had a lot of fun and be able to be around so many great comedians and Bill Hader and, and the great Amy Schumer. She's uh, she's unbelievable. She's hilarious and um, you know the great screenwriter and, and producer Judd Apatow. I mean, you, you can look at his list of movies that he's done uh, to see how great he is in comedy and, and great at movies. Period. So um, it was great to be a part of that cast and be on set. Bro, how, how much of this series is going to be decided on the three-point line? Well, obviously, they use theirs extremely well. They have two of the greatest shooters probably this game has ever seen, um, and Steph and Clay, and um, you know, and other guys on their team. You know, use the three-point line as well. Um, you know, when we're shooting the ball at a high clip, uh, we're a great team as well. But you know, for us, um, we start our hand on the defensive end, and uh, it's going to be very challenging versus this team. And we understand that, and uh, we'll be ready. As you know, you have a ton of finals experience and some of the guys on your bench do. I don't think anyone over there does. Is that automatically an advantage or is that something that you have to make an advantage? You have to turn it in? There's no advantage. The only advantage is if you're able to win the series. That's the only advantage. You know, for us, we got to go out and play. And um, they're going to come out and play as well. They have, um, there's a possibility they can have one more home court game than us. You know, so. Um, you know, you can say that's an advantage, but both teams have shown they can win on the, on the road in the postseason, so there's no advantage. What does a break like this mean for you uh, leading up to the finals? I know you never had this much of a uh, layoff between fi conference finals and finals. What's it mean for you and this team right now? Uh, well, a lot of our guys has been banged up, including myself, to get some rest and be able to get back um, to as close to full strength as possible. I don't think you'll be able to get there, but as close as possible um, and be able to just, uh, you know, I'm going to do a lot of shooting. Uh, this week to kind of get my shot back on point. Um, you know, where I was kind of missing in the last uh, last round. Um, so be able to get my body feeling better and, uh, and work my game and get ready for next week. You've been the for so long, but Steph had the most votes at the All-Star, and he had banners all over Times Square at All-Star Weekend. Did you get the feeling that they were he was being positioned as, as the next face of the league? Um, I don't know. I don't I didn't see the banners. Uh, I did see he had the most votes. Um, if that's the case, then I think it's great for our league. Steph is um, he's great for our league. The way he approaches not only on the floor, but off the floor. He's got a beautiful family and everything. So, I mean, 
you know, that wouldn't be bad at all for our league if he's the, um, if they want to model it behind him. Uh, he's great for our, for our league. Speaking of stuff, what are some of the, I mean, obviously the guy's one of the best shooters to do it, but what's, what are some other matchup problems he presents? Um, well, he has a great motor. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand how, how great his motor is. He never stops moving. Um, his ball handling, his ability to shoot the ball off the dribble and off the catch, um, you know, is, um, is uncanny. I don't think there's ever been a guy in our league to be able to shoot the ball as well as he does um, off the dribble or off the catch, off the ball. And, um, you know, he just creates so many different matchup problems for your defense, and you always have to be aware of them. How do you slow him down? How do you, the same way you slow me down. Well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> within, the, uh, <laughs> within the team competition, there's going to be a lot of attention, particularly for casual fans on, on the MVPs. I mean, you've won multiple. Mm -hmm. This was Steph's year. Yeah. The way you guys play and what you mean to your teams, is it, it sort of show there's, there's different ways to skin a cat when it comes to, to being an MVP? Um, it all depends how you want to define what an MVP is. And um, you know, I've been fortunate to win the trophy four times, but I've been an MVP of my team for a long time. You know, but just because the way I lead and, and the way I approach the game, the way I approach, you know, us being professionals off the floor. Um, so for me, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm honored. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to have four trophies, but I don't need a trophy to understand what MVP really means. And, um, you know, so it's pretty cool, though, when the voters um, go out and they vote for who they think they are, uh, the league is or that respective season. Um, I think Steph uh, was well deserving. What did that Bill Russell MVP? You won it twice. What did that? How did it feel compared to the the regular season MVPs? A, a different kind of experience? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you you won the finals, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to do it twice, uh, and then be rewarded the MVP of the finals, and um, that means a lot. I mean, you was able to do some great things for your team. You know, in the you know the biggest uh, stage in our league, and um, you know it was great, great feeling. Juan, you and Steph ever talk about your Akron connection? No, never have, never have. Um, I don't think we'll talk too much about it either um, <laughs> coming up. Um, but I think it might be a storyline. One of you guys will figure out a way to. Hey, you saw him in college. You knew right away, didn't you, that this kid was going to be special? Yeah. The shot. The his acumen, his basketball intelligence, what did you see in him? Um, everything. Um, the fact that he was, um, you know, I just kind of read upon his story from day one, how under uh, recruited he was. And, uh, you know, to be able to lead a, a Davidson squad like that into the tournament. And I actually got an opportunity to watch him three or four times in college. I drove up to Detroit to watch him in the tournament. I happened to be in Charlotte playing the Hornets, uh, which was the, Bob, was the Bobcats at the time, I believe, um, and got an opportunity to watch him there. And, uh, no, I just thought he was special. I thought he was a special kid. I'm, I'm very good at noticing talent, and I thought he was special then, and you know, obviously he is now still. How, how would you describe your How would you describe your relationship with him now? Um, well, I mean, we don't talk, nothing like that, but we we're respectful of um, each other's game, how each other approach the game, how each other are off the floor. Um, you know, I think it's great. I've had an opportunity to speak to him a few times on the floor in the past. Uh, just talk about you know the process of being a great basketball player and being a leader and what it takes to you know get to this point. And uh, he's, I don't know if he used it or not, but um, you know he's done great for himself. Um, you know I don't think he needs anything from me. You know he has a great family. His dad comes from this pedigree. Uh, he has so many great people around him, so you know he don't need nothing from me. All right, thanks guys. I'll do it. Thanks.